Hi everyone, it's Charles from Letta. Today I'm going to be going over the Letta chatbot template. So this is basically a Next.js application, fully open source, that shows you how to wire up a front end to the Letta API backend. So when you work with Letta, you run a Letta server. The server is where all your agents live, um, and the server itself exposes an API. And of course, you can use the ADE to interact with your agents, but the ADE is meant more for developers. That's why it exposes, um, you know, like all the the tools the memory, all the agent state is directly editable by you when you're using the ADE. But of course, if you're building an end user application, you probably only want to expose certain things, um, such as the messages, the message history, the reasoning, um, possibly like tool calls, tool call results. And that's going to look very different from the ADE because it's going to be um, targeted towards end users as opposed to developers. So this chatbot template that we have online it's basically an open source starter pack that you can use if you want to build out your own front end and connect it to the Letta API backend. Okay, so to use this template, all you have to do is go to our GitHub repo, Letta AI, uh, and then you should be able to see this Letta chatbot example. And yeah, all the instructions on how to use this are in the GitHub repo, but I'll basically be walking through them today um, and kind of showing you how to deploy it uh, and use it with a locally running Letta server. Of course, you can also use this chatbot application with a Letta server that you're running remotely, for example, on Railway, on like any sort of platform as a service um, provider. But in this example, or in this video, we're going to uh, spin up a local Letta server using Docker. It's going to be running on localhost, and then we're going to spin up the front-end application, which will by default connect to localhost. So you can just kind of see what it looks like. OK, so to get started, I'm just going to clone the GitHub repo. And once I've done that, I can navigate to it. And once I'm in the repo, I can just run npm install to install all the dependencies. So you'll see this line in the readme that's copying kind of like m.template into env. Uh, basically, the chatbot template, uh, the Next.js application, is going to read from your .m file. Um, and you obviously want to set the .m file to have all this, your own secrets, not the template. But if you look inside the template, you can see that the ones that matter are like the access token. Um, so if you're running a local letter server and you have secure mode set on, so not HTTPS secure, but secure as in you set up um, password protection, and this is where you're going to put your password. If you're using Letta Cloud, uh, this is where you're going to use your Letta Cloud API key. Then this is going to be where the front end application is looking for your Letta server. So by default, it's going to be looking on uh, localhost port 8283. Okay, so we have some additional options here. Um, cookie based authentication. This basically means that on the front end application, it'll use cookies to provision effectively users. Um, so if you just kind of, you know, log into the application or not log in, but if you like open the application um, based off of the browser cookie, it's going to provision a specific user. So you're not going to see all the use, all the agents that are on the AD or sorry, all the agents that are in the letter server. You're only going to see agents that you created while you're using the app. So if you want to see all the agents that are in your ADE, you're going to have to set this to false. And if you don't want users to be able to create agents from the UI, you only want them to be able to interact with agents then you're going to need to set um, this flag to false. So depending on what you're trying to do with the application, um, you, know, you can set these appropriately. So when you start the application, there are going to be some default agents that populate the app. In this case, um, they're stored inside of this file, default agent.json. You can see it has like default memory blocks, um, some default LLM. So in this case, you're, you're going to have to make sure that your server is uh, running with an OpenAI key because we're using OpenAI providers. Of course, if you don't want to use keys, you can always set this like LM Studio or something. Um, but in this example, just for simplicity, we're going to use OpenAI. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run npm run dev. You can see that the application is running on localhost um, on port 3001. And we're getting some errors here. Um, so you can see, yeah, it says issue loading data. And this is, of course, because the server, uh, the letter server is not running. So we're going to start the letter server in a separate terminal. Um, using the docker run command. Of course, here I'm passing in my OpenAI key. Um, this is a command I copy pasted from elsewhere, so I also have the Anthropic key. Um, but of course, it's not going to matter because the agents that are being going to be created here are using the OpenAI key. OK, so I went ahead and started the server. Um, we can see the server is now running. And now, because the server is running, we can kind of let's try restarting the Next.js website. OK, we can see now that the website is actually working. Um, we have kind of the initial agent that got booted up from that JSON. Um, 
And we also have, because there is kind of an empty message history, we have these starter messages we can start with. Um, so yeah, why don't we go ahead and click on one of these. Okay, so you can see these are effectively like the in-context learning messages. These are the messages that the agent is booted with that kind of get, um, it basically teaches the agent uh, how to use the send message tool call. Okay, so when I click that button, it basically sent an example template message. So this is something that's kind of baked into the app. Um, it's a message just, that's just meant to showcase the capabilities of letter agents. Um, to the user, myself, I said, today was my birthday. My mom, Brenda, made me a chocolate cake, my favorite. And on the, on the web app front end, you can see there is some reasoning here. Bob's birthday is today. He loves chocolate cake. Mom, his mom's name is Brenda. And then there's a follow-up call. So um, the LM here or the agent was chaining. Um, so the first reasoning step was, you know, Bob's birthday is today. The second one is acknowledge Bob's birthday celebration and show appreciation for the cake and his mom. So then the agent says, happy birthday, Bob. It sounds like you had a wonderful day with your mom, Brenda, and indulging in that delicious chocolate cake. How did the celebration go? Okay, so obviously in like a user-facing chat application, you might not actually want to be showing these reasoning messages. I think it's kind of fun, um, you know, to show users this, but... I think in many cases, you might not actually want to do this. And to simulate that on this front end, you can kind of just toggle this off. But if you toggle that off, all you see is the message that came from us, the user, today was my birthday, and then the response um, from the agent that says, happy birthday, Bob. So if you're trying to figure out like what actually happened here, uh, of course, you can go into the ADE and take a closer look. Um, we can also look at the memory. So we, I think if you're building some sort of end user chat application, one thing you might want to expose, similar to Kind of the memory systems on a lot of consumer chat apps is you want to actually just expose to the user what is really stored in memory. So you can see that for the core memory, um, the agent has this persona block. My name is Sam. So this is what was initialized in the kind of the, the default um, agent JSON that we looked at earlier. And the human block, um, I think we started with this. Uh, the human's name is Bob the Builder. This is what was in initially. And then you can see that presumably. What happened here with this reasoning block is that the agent called a tool and that tool was a core memory edit. So you can see that the, the agent added this fact that Bob's birthday is on March 2nd, he loves chocolate cake and his mom's name is Brenda. So this was all added presumably after this message went in. And archival memory, yeah, there's nothing stored here yet. Um, if you, the developer, want to kind of add support for uploading like large documents or something, you could basically like have on the front end some sort of file upload system in your end user app. And then those files could get uploaded to the Lettuce server and populate the archival memory. And then that's what would show up here. Obviously the agent can also add to archival memory itself. Okay, so what we can actually do now is also just look at this agent in the ADE to kind of see the, see the difference. Okay, so if you hop over to the ADE, um, we can just pop over to our local agents, Youthful Eagle, and see it's the same one. Yeah, so if you open it in the ADE, um, now this is like the more full-fledged developer view, right? We can see um, the human text, you know, the human's name is Bob the Builder, then Bob's birthday. And we can see what happened here is kind of what we thought happened, that um, the agent immediately after it got this message about, you know, today's my birthday, the agent decided to call the core memory append tool. And it appended this information to the human block in the core memory. So if you hop back over to the end user application, we can see um, the exact same agent, but a different chat interface. So this is going to look a lot closer to what you'd actually you know, build for your end users. We can actually send another message like, hey, my name is actually Charles, not Bob. Yeah, so here we kind of saw, like, it seems like to the end user, not much was happening, that the agent was kind of um, just thinking for a while, and then it finally replied with a message. But of course, you know, if we expose what's in the memory here, yeah, we can see that the agent kind of replaced Charles or replaced Bob with Charles. Um, yeah, but you could you can also see that the agent uh, messed up a little bit in that it replaced you know this only this instance of Bob the Builder with Charles, um, but it didn't replace the final Bob. Say birthday celebration. Hey, my grandpa showed up wearing a clown outfit. Oh, me scared. Didn't like that. Yeah, so if we hop back over to 
the ADE again, um, just to kind of clarify. Yeah, you can see the exact same chat um, that we're seeing on the front end um, is kind of taking place here. Uh, also in the ADE, you do have this mode called simple mode, which is going to be pretty close to kind of what we're also showing in, in the um, the template front end. But of course, the big difference with the template front end is that the template front end is kind of designed to be extremely simple code. It's all open source that you can just take um, and build off of to make your own chatbot application versus the simple mode inside the ADE. It's meant to be more of a preview. Thank you so much for watching. All the code um, in this video is under the let AI GitHub org under the let a chatbot example repo. Basically, all you need to do is head over to this repo, grab the code, run it yourself, and you're free to take it and build on it. Um, yeah, we're really excited to see what you build with it.